Yeah, boss of YouTube, Six Foot Hacks here. Happy you guys today, guys. Today is the team builder for our final match in the APA. We have been able to make it this far, and not only are we in the finals, guys, we are taking on one of my good friends, Mr. Kyle A. Coach. Of the Miami Don fans is the team that's never lost versus the team they've never beat. So hopefully me and Cal have a really good match, man. I'm anxious and I'm really nervous. Uh, excited, honestly. I just I want this match to be over with because I don't I don't want to feel like this anymore, man. Like I'm so oh I'm so nervous, guys. So nervous and excited. The the main thing I'm really nervous about in this match is just what kind of prep Kyle is going to bring because I, I have no idea what Kyle could possibly bring to this game. But if you guys are excited, hit that thumbs up button down below. Let me know in the comment section below who do you want to win, the Durham Dredagons or the Miami Dom fans. It's okay if it's not me, but let me know in the comment section below who you want to win in tomorrow's finals battle. So I'm not sure what time it'll be going up, but I I'm excited. Either way, and I, again, I just I really hope we have a good game. So definitely check out Kyle, guys. He's had an amazing season in the APA. I think he actually got voted a coach of the season, which is crazy because he has had an amazing season so far. He's overcome a lot of tough opponents, and uh, we were able to make it this far, both of us, and we're excited either way. So I may be going into a little bit more depth in this team builder so it may be a little bit longer than my regular team builders just because this is actually a very important game obviously this is the finals match and I kind of like want to run um, you through, I want to run my ideas to you guys like you get what I'm trying to say like run through my ideas and all the prep and stuff and uh, before I actually jump into anything uh, a couple days ago I did post a video asking people to join my front office for draft leagues I was able to pick out like seven or eight people from the 50 comments I got, honestly didn't even expect to get more than like 10 or 15 comments, but it was 50 comments and I chose like 7 very awesome people and a few of them were able to help me for this uh, finals matchup even though they didn't have to, I specifically told them they don't have to if they don't want to, we can just wait till after the finals too to get things started, but thank you to the homies who were able to help me prep for this match. Uh, I'll try to leave a list of the names down below under me uh, after I finish editing this and just Oh, I'm so anxious, man. I'm so... Okay, okay, just... Oh, I'm gonna let the nerves, like... Ooh, chill out. Just calm down a little bit. So, let's take a quick look at the matchup down below me. So, there has only been one big change since our original first matchup against Kyle. And that is the fact that we now have access to Kofa Grigas. Which, so far, Kofa Grigas has come to both of our playoff games and I think it's safe to say it'll be coming to this playoff game as well mainly because the great thing about Kofa Grigas is that it basically nullifies Halucha that's why part of me is kind of iffy on whether or not he's gonna want to bring Halucha to this game actually if anything if I had to bet money on two Pokemon that I was a hundred percent sure that he would bring to this match my money would be on Seismitoad and Porygon 2. Porygon 2 I think has been the MVP for Kyle in most of his matchups and then Seismitoad is really annoying to break through without any grass coverage and then Toad is also his only form of entry hazard uh, well, Stealth Rocks. Uh, he does have T-Spikes on Weezing, but I really don't expect Weezing in this match. Mainly for the fact that in our first game, Weezing did literally nothing. It just switched in, took damage, I don't even think it ever attacked, it just switched in and switched out and eventually got KO'd, so I'm very, very positive he won't bring Weezing to this game. However though, back to the Halucha thing, part of me does feel like he's not going to bring Halucha, mainly for Kofa Grigas, although Tapu Koko I think can still definitely come to this game, just because Tapu Koko has a much better matchup than what Halucha will have. I don't expect Tapu Koko to be Choice Scarf, although uh, the homies in the front office did suggest that Scarf Coco could be a very likely set. I honestly think he's gonna bring something like Z Brave Bird 
uh, Tapu Koko to try and break through Tangrowth, which can run Assault Vest in this match because we have Kofa Grigis for Halucha, and then Z Brave Bird also smacks Assault Vest Diggersby, which in our first game, Assault Vest Diggersby pretty much shut down Tapu Koko and it never really was able to do too much damage to us. So that's why I'm kind of expecting a physical variant Z move of. Uh, Tapu Koko if he were to bring it. I don't think Scarf particularly has the best matchup in this game. But if he does bring Scarf, then hopefully uh, we can kind of play around that. But I really don't think he's going to want to bring Scarf. Uh, Alolan Persian is actually something I think is very likely to come. Especially because we do have Kofa Grigis now. He could try to use Alolan Persian to uh, try and weaken Kofa Grigis, beat Kofa Grigis, or potentially set up on it. Because if I'm not mistaken, I do believe Alolan Persian gets access to Nasty Plot. And then it can also Parting Shot against our Kofa Grigis because we're not going to want to stay in and take any type of dark type move. Um, hazard removal, I'm not sure if he were to bring hazard removal, like he would need defog on either Tapu Koko or Mega Scizor and if they're both taking up a slot to have access to defog for hazard removal, then that means they're just running uh, one less coverage move or they're running a no setup essentially, so that's going to be really good. Uh, another kind of iffy thing that I think my front office mentioned was that Iron Ball Weezing could be a thing because much like our first matchup, uh, Toxic Spikes just destroy Kyle. Like Kyle doesn't really have a good answer for Toxic Spikes outside of defogging or Iron Ball Weezing because he won't be able to spin on my Kofa Grigus with his Serena. So T-Spikes are going to be very, very huge in this matchup, much like they were in our first game. However, though, in our first game, we only had Mega Beedrill as our Toxic Spiker and we weren't able to get them up. In this match, though, Kofa Grigus is so much better of a T-Spiker than what uh, Mega Beedrill is, essentially. And another great thing about Kofa Grigus in this match is that even if I get low enough to the point where Coco, I'm not Coco, sorry, uh, Halucha is able to easily knock me out with any one hit, that's fine because all I really need Kofa Grigus to do to Halucha is get off the mummy on it because mummy nullifies on burden which means i get rid of his ability i get rid of his plus two speed and then from there i can bring in something to revenge kill halucha and once halucha uh, wastes its unburdened boost it's no longer an issue to us so that's another big benefit why i don't think halucha may be coming to this game but if it does come to the match i do have to be very careful around it and ensure that my kofa grigas does not go to waste because i'm going to need it to be able to handle the Halucha essentially. Uh, Haxorus and Reuniclus I think also have a possible chance to come to this game. Actually Trick Room Reuniclus could be a little bit scary like Calm Mind is a lot more manageable especially because he should be fearing us bringing Mega Beedrill. Part of me actually doesn't even expect Reuniclus but if he were to bring it then I know he's gonna have to be fearing uh, Mega Beedrill. Then Haxorus is actually really scary this game man. If we don't have a Scarfer for Haxorus and it is Dragon Dance it pretty much just plows through our team which is kind of funny because my own mascot is a giant a giant well my youtube mascot not my draft league mascot is a giant scary offensive setup sweeper in this game uh serena and darmanitan i think also have a possibility of coming to this game more darmanitan than serena Honestly, I'm not really too sure what Serena would do outside of like trying to U-turn and maybe try and force a rapid spin knockoff, I suppose. Uh, maybe an offensive variant could be kind of cool. Again, I don't, I have no idea what kind of prep Kyle is going to bring. And that's what I'm really worried about in this game. Uh, and then Darmanitan, I think, could either be Scarfed or Bandit, potentially. So if he does bring Darmanitan, we will have to deal with that accordingly. But going into this matchup, uh, the idea is to get up T-Spikes and get up Stealth Rocks, hopefully, so that our offensive threats can take advantage of all the entry hazard damage and the residual chip damage from T-Spike. So, let's take a look at our first team member here, which is going to be, of course, you guys already know, Miss Kofabulous, aka Kofa Grigas here. And the great thing about Kofa Grigas in this match, again, it's able to stop Palucha, and more importantly, and most importantly of all, it gets up Toxic Spikes, because... 
Outside of Defog and Iron Ball Weezing, there is no way he's going to be able to get rid of our T-Spikes. And if he were to bring Defog, that means he's going to be getting rid of any form of hazard he gets up on our side of the field as well. Which is a huge benefit for us because if he's not able to get up Stealth Rocks against us, that means our walls don't have to take that extra chip damage from the entry hazards. And then with Kof uh, Grigus being such a bulky mon, I should be able to get more than just one opportunity to get up T-Spikes in this game so t-spikes are the main bread and butter of this set because they are going to be so huge especially to wear down the seismitoad and most importantly of all the porygon 2 because porygon 2 is a giant giant nuisance in this match yes we do have something like manchow uh we could also go down the same route as our first match where we try to trick it with jirachi but if he doesn't give me those opportunities, or if he's got good switch-ins to Manchow, then he can play Porygon 2 pretty well enough to the point where we're not going to be able to knock off a Violite, and we're not going to be able to uh, trick it. And that's where T-Spikes really come in handy, because we can at least get that T-Spike off, and it's going to be taking residual damage every single time. So Shadow Ball and Psychic basically hit everything for neutral or super effective damage. Uh, I'm actually a little bit torn between Psychic or Energy Ball. I may change Psychic to Energy Ball just because I want to have that extra option to hit Seismitoad. Even if he has the Rindo Berry, we can pop the Rindo Berry and we're still doing a really good amount of damage with two uh, Energy Balls regardless unless the Toad is like max Spadef, max HP, which I really don't think he would bring purely Spadef, uh, purely max HP Seismitoad to this game anyway. So any type of damage on Toad is going to be really good for us. And then Haze is just there mainly to be able to prevent things like Calm Mind Tapu Koko from setting up, Calm Mind Reuniclus, Dragon Dance, Haxorus, uh, I guess Nasty Plot, um, Alolan Persian, and Sword Zant Scizor. So Haze is really nice just to stop those mons, keep them at bay from being able to set up and uh, prove to be massive threats. Uh, the bit of speed is just so we can outspeed the Reuniclus. If he's not running more than 20 speed on Reuniclus, then being able to outspeed that is going to be amazing. The bit of spadef is just there so we can take it slightly, slightly better. But mostly, I just want this to be here to check Coco, get up T-Spikes, and then uh, just kind of wear things down with Shadow Ball or Psychic. Or, again, I may change it to Energy Ball, I think, because I feel like Energy Ball has more benefits. Like, yeah, he does have the Weezing, but Shadow Ball still does good damage. And again, I really, I really really do not expect Weezing in this game just because of our first matchup where again it did nothing like it literally did nothing so I, I really don't expect Weezing so I probably will end up changing this to Energy Ball. Uh, next off we have Umaga aka Donphan. This is uh, one of our main answers to Tapu Koko in this game and this does kind of help against a more physical variant because again Z Brave Red is something really expecting to come to this game or just something that can nuke us on the physical side to be able to deal with assault vest diggers being assault vest hand growth and that's where Don fan kind of comes in handy here because we already have such a high physical defense plus another huge benefit of Don fan is that we can run stealth rocks on this mon and we don't have to run them on jirachi if we were to bring jirachi which gives jirachi an extra slot an extra move to be able to uh, hit something or support the team with so that's another huge benefit of Don fan over diggers being in this matchup it's just the fact that we can get up those stealth rocks and that's going to be really good plus roar is also amazing because much like kofa grigas with haze roar ensures that nothing is able to safely set up on dawn fan plus if we're able to get up t spikes and get up our stealth rocks we're going to be able to phase his team around racking up that stealth rocks damage and spreading the poisons around before he's able to potentially try and defog so that's another huge reason why I don't have rapid spin on the set and why I really feel like hazard removal on our end was not really needed because if anything Kyle is probably going to be the one who's going to be more focused on hazard removal because his team is so weak to T-Spikes and even Spikes along with Stealth Rocks because we do have Diggersby that could run Spikes potentially. So that's why I'm expecting him to bring some type of hazard removal and then that way again he can get rid of our hazards if he gets them up on our side of the field. Uh, Earthquake and Knockoff just kind of hit everything that he has. Knockoff is actually really important in this match because if I'm able to knock off Porygon 2's uh, a Violite, that means that my offensive threats can easily 2-a-k-yo Porygon 2 after Stealth Rocks or after being toxic by T-Spikes and we're going to be able to pressure Porygon 2 so it's not as much of a nuisance as it possibly could be. And an offensive sub 
substitute set is likely to come to this game although i feel like he may want the extra move option instead of running substitute like recover three attacks makes a lot of sense uh, i guess recover substitute also makes sense i think he would like to run trace as opposed to download this game because he can trace our abilities like mummy uh, regenerator serene grace from jirachi as well and um i think those are like really the three best ones oh sheer force from tauros if we were to bring tauros too so that's four great abilities that porygon 2 can trace if you were to bring chase bring trace sorry but yeah just purely spadef with the rendo berry this ensures that uh coco can never to a ko us with anything even i think if he's running the uh, bloom doom i don't think he to a ko's us or actually he does to a ko's but we live a bloom doom and then we can earthquake him and if he's got bloom doom he doesn't have the shucka bear so earthquake i think does indeed end up knocking out the uh, type of coco so next off we have mama aka rotom heat now we didn't bring rotom heat to our original first game but in this matchup or, or this time around i really feel like scissor is a possibility to bring to this match and if you were to bring scissor i kind of expect either a defog set or a sword zen set which this rotom heat uh basically just stops like so long as that rotom heat scissor literally does nothing to us the worst thing it does is go for knockoff but even then that's not that big of an issue because we can still overheat it we can bolt switch against it uh we can potentially paint split on the switch in which is going to be very beneficial to rotom here another huge thing about rotom is that this act as a secondary backup check to the Tapu Koko and this can also help wear down Darmanitan if you were to bring it because Flare Blitz is going to be taking that recoil damage, it's going to be taking the Rocky Helmet damage, it's going to be taking the Toxic damage and it will hopefully be taking the Stealth Rock damage so Darmanitan will be able to wear itself down very very quickly which is going to be absolutely amazing. Obviously I do need to be careful with Rock Slide because that is a coverage move that he could definitely run just for Rotom so I will have to be careful with that but this is also able to gain us momentum because of the bolt switch and foul play is honestly a move that I really don't like on this set but my front office made a good argument and they said that or I, I don't know if I mentioned it or they maybe mentioned it but uh, something was brought up about Haxorus being able to set up on this Rotom set. Like the way this team was made, Haxorus can't set up for free at all, except on Rotom Mo, uh, Rotom Heat here. Sorry. So somebody mentioned a foul play as an option for Rotom Heat, and I figured that because Haxorus is such a scary threat, and even if he were to bring in Haxorus against my Rotom, I don't feel comfortable in going directly for a Bolt Switch into potentially one of our Choice Scarf Pokemon just because that gives him a chance to potentially go for like a Z Outrage, uh, a Z Earthquake maybe, uh, maybe Substitute even and that would be terrifying so I feel like Foul Play while it's really only for the Haxorus I really feel like Haxorus is such a huge threat in this match that it warrants just having this one move for that one Pokemon otherwise I would love to have Hidden Power Grass on the set to be able to smack the Seismitoad, uh, even Toxic if we're not able to get up T-Spikes, just regular Toxic would be really amazing to still be able to poison the Porygon too, but for the most part, uh, this Rotom is just kind of here to be a Pivotmon and to help check Darmanitan and the Tapu Koko, as well as hopefully surprise the Haxorus, but I really don't think I'll be putting myself or... I don't, I don't think that scenario essentially will come up, but if it does come up, Foul Play does a lot of damage and that's really great. So uh, the 60 Spadef EVs are just so we can take hits slightly better from the Porygon 2 because Rotom here can act as a potential switch into Porygon 2 and then from there we can overheat, Volt Switch, pick it off maybe or go for a foul, uh, not foul play sorry, go for a pain split to gain back some HP. So next off we have one of the best breakers I think in this matchup and that is going to be Choice Specs Primarina. This was my own little concoction here and this is the one set I really just hope puts in nothing but the utmost of work. So the great thing about this set is that uh, we're running modest. Obviously we don't have max special attack because max special attack really isn't needed in this matchup. Like Primarina hits so ridiculously hard with a modest nature, this special attack investment and with Choice Specs that a Porygon 2 even if he was purely spadef bulky if we're able to get up T-Spikes and uh, Stealth Rocks, I think just T-Spikes alone, we're able to 3 hit KO him with a Choice Specs Hydro Pump, which is insane because Porygon 2 is stupidly bulky 
And then, if we're able to knock off the Aviolite, we just straight to a KO it with Moonblast or Hydro Pump, essentially. Even Scald, I think, has a good chance to a KO Porygon, too. Plus, if Primarina is put into Torrent range and Seismitoad is gone, I literally just click Scald or Hydro Pump and claim a kill. There's nothing he has outside of Seismitoad that is going to be safely switching in to this Primarina. Uh, actually, I guess Serena. But even, like, even Spadef Bulky Serena is straight to a KO. And if he is purely Spadef Bulky, then I outspeed him because that's why we're running uh, so much speed on our Primarina here. Reaching 96 speed ensures that we outspeed non-speedy v Serena and non-speedy v Seismitoad. So then that we can also outspeed Weezing and Porygon too if they are running some speed or a bit of speed essentially so that's another huge benefit of the set is that it can outspeed those walls and nuke them or to a ko them and then uh, just kind of punch holes through his team also with the bulk investment a Darmanitan, if it's banded, does not Oko us. Scarf Darmanitan can only 2 a KO if we have if he gets Stealth Rocks up. Without Stealth Rocks, he can't 2 a KO us, which is gonna be really amazing. Plus, even if he does 2 a KO us, if it comes down to that scenario, he's gonna have to take the potential entry hazard damage and all the recoil damage and hope that he gets the roll in his favor to knock us out. So that could be very uh, beneficial. Actually, something I thought about putting on the set over Scald was Aqua Jet just for the Darmanitan to be able to to get off that extra little bit of damage but I figured if I lock myself into something like Aqua Jet that gives Haxorus a free substitute potentially a free Dragon Dance a uh, free substitute and Dragon Dance free substitute uh, SD like I, I don't want to put myself in that scenario and the great thing about Hydro Pump is that Hydro Pump can legitimately 2 AKO Haxorus which is ridiculous because it's resisted, but then again, Primarina hits like an absolute truck, and Haxorus doesn't really have the best bulk around, so I'm really hoping that Primarina puts in a lot of work, man. Like, I think this set right here with Bolt Switch and U-Turn support, being able to bring this in, this thing is going to break through so much of his team with the right prediction, and if we're able to get up the entry hazards, man, I really think that Primarina can just put in so, so much work, so... Moving on to our first U-Turner, actually, that is going to be, of course, Jirachi here. Rocking uh, a very similar set to our first game, but uh, with a bit of a different move option here. Because we have Stealth Rocks on Donphan, that gave us a free slot on this Jirachi. Now, the only issue with us having a free slot is that unless I went with Icy Wind, Haxorus just kind of came in, Dragon Dance twice, and basically swept through our team. So this is where this set is actually kind of cool because between U-Turn and Psychic, whatever we don't hit with Psychic, we can just U-Turn out against into something that deals with the Pokemon that he has to switch into Psychic for our Jirachi. So essentially, Reuniclus, uh, Alolan Persian, and Mega Scizor are all his switch-ins to Psychic from Jirachi. We just U-Turn out against them and we bring in the appropriate counter or the appropriate check to them and then we go from there. Trick is amazing for things like Calm Mind Reuniclus, but most importantly it's going to be amazing for the Porygon too. I doubt Kyle is going to let me trick him like he let me trick him in our first game. So that's why I kind of want to bluff that I don't have Trick for a couple turns. Like let's say I keep bringing in Jirachi on Porygon 2. I'm probably going to U-turn out against it like two or three times, give him the false sense of security and then on that fourth time potentially bring it in and go for the trick and completely shut down Porygon 2 and then from there we also have Healing Wish to be able to give a second chance to our Kofagrigus, our Darmanitan, our Rotom or even our amazing breaker in Specs Primarina so I really think Healing Wish is going to be extremely clutch in this matchup and with him not having the best psychic switch-ins I really felt like only going mono psychic as an offensive move was going to be uh, more than good enough honestly and again we just U-turn it against those things that we can't psychic against and that's still going to be very good for us as well so moving on to the final team member here we have Hydreigon and I want to give a big, big shout out to my boy Shuckle King 87 uh, If I had to choose one person to like team build with me forever or like the one person I mainly trust when it comes to like prepping for things, it would easily be Shuckle King 87 And he made a great argument because originally this was going to be Mega Beedrill. Uh, Mega Beedrill was here just because it gave us double toxic spikes. It also gave us another knockoff mon, which was going to be absolutely amazing. But the thing about that is that if we had kept Mega Beedrill, we were stupidly weak to Seismitoad. Like an offensive variant of Seismitoad basically just came in, clicked the move, and claimed a kill. So the great benefit of 
Hydreigon here is that we have a switch in two seismic toad unless he does ice punch me or hidden power ice or icy win me I guess but even if he's got those move options that means he's not running any uh, other type of coverage essentially so that means something else could potentially switch into it so the the great thing about Hydreigon here again is that it gives us a secondary scarper this also gives us a very great way to revenge kill plus one speed Haxorus or just a potential Scarf Taxorus in general. Earth Power is mainly for the Tapu Koko, which the other benefit, like there's just so many good benefits to Hydreigon, although it does have its flaws. For example, uh, if I lock myself into Draco Meteor, something like Reuniclus comes in, it can set up, uh, Tapu Koko can set up, Scizor can set up. If I lock myself into Dark Pulse, that allows Halucha to potentially set up, uh, Coco again to set up, but we have switch-ins to all those type of Pokemon that could potentially use an incorrectly locked in Hydreigon as setup fodder. So with Dark Pulse, uh, it's probably going to be our main form of stab in this game essentially. It's going to be probably the one move that we're spamming over and over again, especially if we're able to get up T-Spikes and we don't even need Stealth Rocks, but if we do get up Stealth Rocks, just with T-Spikes alone. Tapu Koko does not safely switch in to Dark Pulses. I think Dark Pulse already, if he's not running any type of bulk, is doing like 25 to 30 percent. Then you have to factor in that every time Tapu Koko switches in, it's not only taking the Dark Pulse damage, it's taking the 12 percent from the Toxic Spikes as well. And then if I have Stealth Rocks up, that's another 12 percent that Tapu Koko is taking. So Tapu Koko is going to be taking that 25 to 30 percent and then that possible initial 24 percent from the entry hazards damage, which means eventually Tapu Koko is going to be overwhelmed, knocked into range of Dark Pulse, and Hydreigon can basically just go on a tear and click Draco Meteor potentially. There's also the chance that I catch the Tapu Koko on the switch in with the Earth Power and get rid of it right out. So Hydreigon just has so many good benefits. Plus, the great thing about double Scarfers in this match is that if he knows my Jirachi is Scarfed, he probably won't expect my Hydreigon to be Scarfed or vice versa essentially so the double scarf surprise factor can potentially get us an extra KO an extra two a KO or it's gonna make him play around thinking that okay uh, Jirachi Scarf, so Hydreigon's not Scarf, so I don't have to worry about Scarf Hydreigon, and then we bring in Scarf Hydreigon, and then that could potentially win us the game, or uh, put Jirachi in the place of Hydreigon, and just, there's so many good benefits in the long run of Hydreigon. Well, again, it does have the huge flaws of letting things set up, as long as our walls don't get too whittled down, or we still have them at a good enough HP, we can switch into the appropriate thing that's going to try to use Hydreigon. For setup fodder and then hopefully we can deal with them accordingly obviously if my walls are too weak i will have to play very very carefully with this hydreigon but regardless I, I stand by the fact that double scarfers i think are going to be really good in this matchup here guys so that is going to be our final team if i if i remember i'll put like all the different versions of of the team that eventually led to this being the final final version for this last game in the APA and again I'm just I'm nervous I'm anxious I'm excited man just oh I wanted to be over already I just wanted to be over already guys so I don't have to feel like this and just I hope we can win it man I hope the Durham Dredagons can get another championship and we can just take it all the way man so thank you guys for your support this season if you're excited hit that thumbs up button down below i apologize if this was a little longer than my normal team builders i don't even know how long this is already but just yeah hope you guys enjoyed hope you're hyped and let me know in the comment section below who do you want to win the team that's never lost the miami dom fans or the team they've never beat the durham dredagon so with that being said i'll see you guys tomorrow with the actual finals battle and later everybody no matter where you're at I'm not here to make friends, it's time to attack And deplete your HP with a final smash Don't make me turn around and pull a six foot hacks <laughs> Six foot, six foot hacks, hacks yeah. Six foot, six foot hacks, hacks yeah. Six foot, six foot hacks, hacks